Hi, my name is Zoe. This is NAPLAN Year 7 Numeracy. Just a disclaimer, this content is NAPLAN-like and based on NAPLAN testing. As mentioned on the slide, it aims to prepare students for the types of questions you'll see on the NAPLAN test, but it is not directly affiliated with NAPLAN tests. Now, a brief overview of this video and the structure of NAPLAN. So for year seven, there are calculator and non-calculator sections in the numeracy test. You'll have 40 minutes of non-calculator and then a separate test with, which is also 40 minutes where you'll be allowed to use your calculator. In this video, you have three non-calculator questions and then three calculator questions. We'll be going over a range of different questions together. I advise you to follow along, pause the video before the question to, to, and have a go at working through the question. Um, and then replay the video when you need help or when you'd like to see my explanation. So to follow along, you'll need a calculator, a pen or pencil, and some working out paper or your maths book. I've selected a range of NAPLAN-like questions. However, there are a wider variety of question types possible on the NAPLAN test than is presented here. If you'd like more practice, there's always more practice papers available. So question one, remember this is non-calculator, so put your calculators away now until later. You can also pause the video here and have a got the question by yourself if you'd like. As with any question, the first step is to read the entire question. Okay, we'll start with that. Some students were asked to choose their favorite sports in a survey. Five students said netball, four students said soccer, four students said football, the rest said basketball. How many students said basketball was their favorite sport? This question's accompanied by a graphic. So you've got netball, soccer, football, and basketball. Um, I'd also look at the answers in every uh, multiple choice question because then that, that way you can get a range of the possible answers. If it helps you better understand the question, annotate the graph. A great way to start any question like this where you have to try and figure out a missing value is to write down what you know. As long as you don't write anywhere near the answers section, you can make notes on your NAPLAN test. So going back to the graph, we can see that the gray area is a quarter of the entire circle. Looking at the corresponding values, we know that netball was equal, the number of students that said netball is equal to five. Now we know a fraction of this circle is equal to five and we know that Four, uh, four quarters, which is what this section is, make up a full circle. And the full circle is equal to the total number of students. So then we can multiply four by five, four for the number of quarters in a circle and five for the value of each quarter. So then we know that the whole value is 20. Now we also know some other values. We know that four students said knock soccer and four students said football. So that's soccer and football. So then we can go on to subtract five and four and four from the whole thing to find out the remainder, which is basketball. So that's 20 minus four, minus four, minus five. Have a go at that yourself. The answer there would be seven. And lucky that's an answer value. So you'd fill in that little bubble there. So your first tip, write down all relevant information. Like I mentioned in the earlier question, it's a great idea to help you understand a complicated question. Um, write down what you know, what values the question tells you in its wording and what you need to find out. And I know this sounds really simple, but often the biggest challenge with NAPLAN questions can be understanding the wording. So by writing down what you know and what you need to find out, you're reducing it to the maths and really simplifying it for yourself. Label all graphs and diagrams that you have trouble understanding. Even if they're not to scale, this can help orientate you in the question. It will most likely say on the diagram, on the question if the diagrams are not to scale. Moving on now to question two. This is still non calculator, keep those calculators away. So we look at this and we can immediately see that it's an algebra question. We'll read it first. Sun equals eight, sun times cloud, 
equals cloud plus cloud plus cloud plus cloud plus sun, what is the value of cloud? And remember, we read the answers as well. So you get a rough range as to what our answer might be. So zero to three. Okay, we've got a bit of an idea. We'll forget that for now. So often in NAPLAN, algebra questions are phrased like this, represented with random pictures. In this question, it's suns and clouds. You might be used to seeing letters like X, Y, and Z. It actually means the same thing. Any letter or picture can be used to represent a number that you don't know in algebra. So in this question, your first step would be to write in what you know. So that's eight times cloud equals cloud plus cloud plus cloud plus cloud plus eight. So if you don't know where to go from here, and it's a multiple choice question, you can try subbing in the answers for cloud. However, this is quite time consuming and I'm really uh, recommend against this where it's possible. All right, moving on to working out. So eight times cloud is the same as eight cloud. You can eliminate the multiplication sign and it remains the same. So I've done that on both sides here, just to simplify the problem both visually and to just make it less wordy. So eight cloud equals four cloud plus eight. So then what our aim is in any algebra question is to get the value we don't know, which in this case is cloud on one side and a whole number on the other. So to do that, we'll minus four cloud from both sides to eliminate this. And now remember, you can do something to one side, but whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So I have minus four cloud from this side and four cloud from this side, which means this becomes zero cloud and this becomes four cloud. So then your equation becomes four cloud equals eight. And then to further simplify this down and get our final answer, we'll get rid of the four on this side and divide both sides again by four. So four divided by four is zero and eight divided by four is two, which leads us to our final answer, which is cloud equals two. And now I'm just gonna go over that again. Um, in order to get rid of the multiplication, we'll divide, which is what we did here in the third step. And, what, uh, and in order to get rid of um, just clouds, we can subtract them. All right, going back to our previous slide, we can fill in our answer of two here. All right, moving on to our second tip. Answer every question. If you're lost or confused, that's okay. You can skip that question and complete the questions when you can. When you finish as many questions as possible, return to your skip questions. If you're stuck on a super hard question and have nearly run out of time, it's totally fine to guess. In all tests you do in school, I'd try and make sure that no question is unanswered. Even if it's a crazy answer, if it's, um, although it's much better to work it out, you may get lucky with a guess. With multiple choice questions, as most NAPLAN numeracy is, although not all, even if you don't know how to work it out, it's really, really important you still take a guess because you've got, if there's four answers, you have a one in four chance of getting it right. Now, moving on to question three. Again, this is still non-calculator, so keep that calculator away. So, John had $10. He went to the market and bought three bananas and was given $3.10 in change. How much was each banana? So this problem you work out backwards. As with any math problem, if you don't know where to start, write down the information you know, what you don't know, and what you need to find out. So we know that John started with $10 and ended with $3.10. To find out what he spent, we can subtract what we ended up with from what we started with. So that's subtracting $3.10 from $10. So 10 minus $3.10 equals $6.90. Now going back to our initial information, we know how many bananas he bought. To find out he, how much each banana was, you can divide the value to find out the top, uh, 
that you've already got, which is what he spent, by three. So that's dividing $6.90 by three. So $6.90 divided by three is $2.30. Um, as this is non-calculator, what I'd advise doing is um, first dividing six by three and you get two and then going on and dividing 90 by three and you get 30. And that just makes it a little bit easier if you find mental uh, arithmetic a little hard. So then our answer is $2.30. Again, $6.90 divided by three is $2.30 and you can fill in that box right there. Now, tip number three, know your calculator and when to use it. Your calculator may be your best friend in NAPLAN or it could be your worst enemy. Time management is key in NAPLAN, especially as you advance through your later years. If you find yourself using your calculator when you could be doing quicker mental math, take note. Doing this in NAPLAN may waste way too much time. On the other hand, many questions in the calculator section cannot be done without a calculator at all. Learn how to use your calculator efficiently for calculator questions. Understanding what all the buttons do on your calculator is key for this, both in NAPLAN and throughout your school career. On that note, get your calculators out now because we'll be using them for the final three questions. So question four, it's a calculator question. Squares with sides two centimetres are cut out from the corners of a rectangular piece of paper. The sides are then folded along the orange lines to make a box. What is the volume of the box? Diagram not to scale. Most images in NAPLAN are not to scale, meaning that you probably won't be able to figure out the answer from these graphs uh, or diagrams, but the diagrams can still give you some idea of what the question's asking, particularly if you're a more of a visual learner. So for this, I'd make sure to write down all relevant information. Label the diagram um, on any hard or complicated questions you're given to help you with this particular question. Add in the two centimeter square sides before you try and solve the question. So these are the squares and as squares um, have equal sides, all, all of these sides uh, will be two centimeters. So I'd write down two centimeters here and here, here and here, and, oh, and here, although these ones don't matter so much because we know that the 10 centimeters sides are the same and the 13 centimeter sides, these two are the same. Um, so the tricky part about this question is understanding exactly what the side values are. Um, so as they're folded up, we have to take away two centimeters from the uh, corner or cut out more adequately. Um, so although our initial values are 10 and 13, our final values are going to be 10 minus two centimeters here, minus uh, two centimeters here, and 13 minus two centimeters here and here. So that means you've got 10 minus two minus two and 13 minus two minus two, which is six and nine. And then you have the other side, which is here, which is two. And the formula for the volume of a box is set. Multiply length times width times height. This formula is really important to know. If you haven't already memorized it, I'd make sure to pause the video now and write it down. So that's length times width times height, which means the final e equation becomes nine times six times two. So then, if you add those values into your calculator, you should get the final answer. And now, remember, it's a volume question. So the answer of uh, six uh, times nine times two or nine times six times two, which is the same, is 108. But because it's a volume question, it has to be 108 centimetres cubed rather than centimetres squared, which is centimetre a little three simple. So question five, another calculator question. A large mosaic is made from large and small pieces. There are twice as many large pottery pieces as small pieces. The mass of each large piece is 120 grams. The mass of each small piece is 80 grams. The total mass of all pieces used is 32 kilograms. How many pieces are used in total to make the design? 
So again, write down the information that you know in simpler terms. There are twice as many large and small and the corresponding values for large and small pieces. Let's move into the working outside. So for every two large pieces, which are 120 grams each, there is one small piece, which are 80 grams each. So that means uh, you get a total of 320 for each group. It'll help to consider these, this group of three as one group, as you know that two large pieces plus one small piece is equal to one group in this problem. So then the question becomes, how many groups were in the mosaic? From here, we can divide 32 kilos by 320 grams. So that's here, 320 grams equals 0 0.320 kilos. So um, if you don't know your grams to kilos conversion, I'd advise you to go over that. Um, but in the interest of keeping this video short, we'll leave it for now. So you have 32 divided by 0 0.320. Put that into your calculator and it should equal 100. And then that's, remember that this is 100 total groups. And in each group, you have three pieces. And going back to our question, the question is how many pieces? So then you have an, a new equation, which is 100 groups times three, because that's how many group, uh, pieces are in each group. So then your answer will be 300 pieces. Moving on to question six. Jack and Molly work in a toy store and are lining up four different types of toys in the same order to display as shown. Which toy will be in the 40 second square? So for a question like this, there are a couple of different ways to approach it. You could count everything out, but that just takes a really, really long time. So you can see that the pattern repeats and we were told in the question that the pattern repeats in the same order over and over again. One of the simpler ways to do it is to make it into a division question. There are four symbols. So you have four possible uh, answers, which are down here. So again, as you know that the pattern repeats in the same order, you can predict which toy will be placed at every number. You know what the pattern starts with, which is this green puzzle piece. So that's number one. Drum is number two, kite number three, soccer ball number four. By dividing any number by four, and counting the difference starting at puzzle piece, so starting with puzzle piece first, you can know what shape will be there. So that's 42 divided by four. And you can put that into your calculator now. And the answer you get should be 10.5. And now you don't, for this question, you don't really need to know the 10 part. That's how many uh, groups were before. The part that, in, that interests you is the 0.5. As it's not a whole number, we'll have to treat, treat the pattern of group uh, of uh, toys as a whole and divide them down to find the answer. If there are four total values, half of this will be two. So, or, um, so counting two from the start, you'll get the drum. One, two, that's the drum. And the answer there will be the drum. Tip number four, practice makes perfect. Keep trying and practicing, especially in questions that you're finding tricky. It is always okay to ask for help from airline tutors, your parents or guardian, guardians, siblings and teachers. There are many resources available. Give the practice tests a go and watch these videos at your own pace. Most of all, good luck. Go over the tips and any questions you struggle with in this video, both with and without the explanations. Don't stress about it too much, as above all, NAPLAN should be a learning experience.